What's good, YouTube? This your boy T World back at y'all again with another art tutorial, man. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that like button, comment, subscribe, make sure you click post notifications so you will be notified every time you boy drop some heat. In today's video, I will be showing you guys a few of my tips. So without further ado, let's jump right into these beat. All right, first thing you want to do, you want to set your artboard. You know the size, so I'm going to show y'all from start to finish the size I like to draw on. So let's go ahead and click new. And what I like to draw on is 18 by 18 inches. And that's the best size to me for if you're trying to post inside of social media, mainly Instagram. So I save my artboard as 18 by 18 inches. And I just hit create. And after I come in here, first thing I do is set my pressure sensitivity on my digital art tablet. The digital art tablet I'm using is a UG drawing tablet where you draw right onto the stream. If you would like to purchase one of these, all you gotta do is go to amazon.com. That's where I got mine's at. I got mine's from Amazon. And also purchase you one of these little gloves, man, cause they come in handy when you rubbing your hand and drawing on the string, it'll help your hand slide smoothly without, you know what I'm saying, putting a, a rash on your hand because you sliding up on the string so much. So get one of these, they real comfortable. You know what I'm saying, a little digital art glove. And make sure you have your digital art tablet because you cannot set pressure sensitivity with using your mouse, so you would need a digital art tablet. But if you don't, have a digital art tablet you always can check out my video on how to create a a brush with your mouse i got that video on my channel as well so go look for that so the first thing i do i set my brush right here the pressure and i change this bottom number to three and i hit okay Hey, bam. Set my brush to three. Now I got me a nice little pressure brush. So when I press light, it'll go light when i press down real hard it'll give me a thicker line when i press light again it'll go back light and that's how you get that that feel you know what i'm saying the brush you see me use on every video and the first thing i think you should do when you're inside this program you need to learn what everything do and why would you need everything you know what i'm saying figure out what would you use everything for that's the main thing you should do when you're starting on a new program you got to figure out what what is what what will work for what so the only thing i use though is my brush and the i move this knob up and what this do is help me make cleaner lines See? Then if you move it down, it'll be more like kind of, it'll be kind of harder to make a straight line. You know what I'm saying? But then when you move your smoothness up, it'll help you correct your lines and help you make more cleaner lines. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to want to play with that a lot. Smoothness and your two favorite things in this program should be your brush tool and your pencil tool. I use my pencil tool to do all my coloring and all my shading. Now all you need to know about your pencil tool is if you move the color to the top and make sure the bottom one is locked, double click it, make sure your, your settings on your pencil tool look just like this, hit okay. And the pencil tool worked as a fill tool. so. Mainly, all you have to do is draw out what you want it to fill in. See, I'm drawing it out at, at first. 
And then I make my way back to get closer to close it off so it'll know. See, it'll fill in. So that'll save you a whole lot of time when you're coloring. You know what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. Pencil tool come in handy for all your coloring and it'll help you it'll help you buy so much time. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's hard trying to color manually. So make sure you don't sleep on the pencil tool. Well these are the only two tools I really use is my pencil tool and my brush tool. And my eyedropper tool when I'm trying to, you know, select the same color. I, I'm finna draw something real quick. To draw something super duper fast. So I can keep y'all in my class. Wait, wait, wait. Draw something fast for y'all, man. This is how you change the size of your brush. I'm gonna draw this up. Do it with big nostrils. See, and sometimes you don't want your smoothness all the way up because it'll correct your lines too much. So I'm gonna double click it and I'm gonna put it right in the center. That's the sweet spot. And to get better, if you just starting out doing digital art, to get better at it, you just gotta draw as much as you can. When I first started doing digital art, I just, I just drew every second of the day almost, bro. Like, I just was having so much fun. Even though I wasn't that good at it at first, I just loved it. I was like, man, this is so much smoother. I ain't gotta worry about messing up no paper. And I can practice all day. You know what I'm saying? So, all you gotta do is just get it, practice, work with it. And over time, you'll just, you'll create your own little method. You know what I'm saying? Of making it easy for you. Become real easy. drawing something I'm just going going with the flow I ain't even thinking of anything in particular we just drawing to be drawing you feel Make his face a little smaller. One thing you want to do, look, I'm going to show you the two ways. The wrong way, and I'm going to show you the right way. First thing we're going to do, I'm trying to make it smaller so I can fit it on the page. But see, if you just grab it like this, and you hold shift, and you make it smaller, you see how the lines just got bigger where you can't really see the detail? So we're going to hold Control Z and go back. How you would want to make it smaller, what you got to do first, while it's all selected, you got to go to Object, Expand Appearance, and then you got to hit 
merge on your pathfinder and watch this now we finna hold shift and make it smaller by grabbing the corner and you see how it still kept my line sharp yeah so keep that in mind man you gotta make sure you you merge all your lines before you change the size so it won't change the shape of your lines let me finish drawing out this little face. How we gonna make them? Okay, we gonna make them like a like a fat Albert character, but with a spin. We just gonna do that type of style. Okay. This off right here, and you notice another thing too. When you're drawing, you gotta make sure you're closing your lines off, so you won't have no problems when it's time to do the coloring method. I'm gonna make this a basic tutorial. I ain't gonna go too far into it. Look now. I'm just pull this down. Okay, cool. See, going to my pencil tool because I want to add some hair effects. Let's go to our pencil tool, move the color black to the top, make sure the bottom one is locked. Let's draw out sideburn like that. And also, what we're going to do, I want to clean these eyebrows up, so I'm going to make them a little, a little more fuller. We're going to end it with a point. End it. End it with a point, just like that. Let's go ahead and give him give him a mustache give him a little hair a little facial hair down here see the pencil tool it go hand in hand with your brush tool you know what i'm saying so i use my brush tool to do my line work and then i use my pencil tool to do all my feelings you feel me so Okay, now that we got, now that we got our character, let me make this a little rough. A little bit on the rough side. Make this connect. Okay, now that we got our character finished up and drawn up, what you want to do? It's the whole process. I'm gonna do it slow so you can keep up with me. You want to select everything. Just like I said, we're going to go to Object, Expand Appearance, and then you're going to click Merge on your Pathfinder. If you can't find your Pathfinder, what you would want to do is just come to Window, and then you want to go to Pathfinder and put a check mark beside it so it'll pull it out and put it on your artboard. So, after we done merged all the lines, what we're going to do is we gonna make a copy of the line work. So, to make a copy, let me do that over. To make a copy, what you wanna do, you wanna drag your line work to this blank sheet of paper, lock the top copy. And the reason I lock the top copy because I'm gonna add the color to the bottom copy and I always, you always want to keep uh, a copy of your line work plain you know what i'm saying just in case you need to redo the coloring or you want to do anything as far as shading it's best to keep your line work sitting on the top so you can make a shading layer right under so let's select the layer that's underneath find us a nice little base tone to start with okay we're gonna go to our rectangle tool and drag the color over the entire picture. 
After you do that, you want to right click the color, go to arrange, center back. You'll know if you did it step right, if you look over here at your layers and you see the color sitting on top of the line work. You want to highlight everything once again and click merge so the color can become one with your line work. Now we're going to right click the color and go to isolate select group. Now, what I like to do, after I do all that, I like to hit this drop down menu and lock all my black lines. And keep the top two unlocked and close it back. I do that so I won't make a mistake and delete my line work and it'll be easier to work around it. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and color the face. Right click it, hit isolate, select group. So every group that's closed off, we can color it separately. I'm holding shift so I can select more than one area at a time. I'm gonna hit color white. Hold shift. We're going to hit brown, hold shift, we're going to hit green, bow, bow. There you have it. So, after you color the base layer, what I like to do is create a layer in between the line work and the color layer. And this is the layer we put the shadows on. Oh, wait, 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 we got one more step. Go back. I make a copy of my color layer. Then I go to the layer in between Make sure I select it. And all you would like to do is hit this white arrow and delete. The, uh, you would like to delete the skin, skin tone. Only the skin tone. And the reason I do that, so when I'm doing the shadows on the skin tone, the lip color and the eye color and the hat color sit on top. So now, Bring my base color layer back. And now I got this little color layer of the eyes and the mouth and the hat. And we're gonna create a layer in between those two right here. Let's find us a nice shadow on that brown. Practice on blending your colors as well. Go to my pencil tool. And let's create some shadows. And to get good at making shadows, it's gonna take a lot of practice, man. It's gonna take a lot of practice. You gotta be willing to put in the work. I do all my all my shading with my pencil tool. All of it. But just like I told you, man, the main tools you will be using in Adobe Illustrator are your pencil tool and your brush tool. I'm just drawing, drawing out my shadows. You see how easy it is to work? Now that I, I put that layer of the eye color and the mouth color at the top, 
So I can I don't have to worry about drawing on it because it's gonna drop right behind it. You see what I'm saying? So you just gotta set yourself up to make your job more easier. So let me come in, put some shadows in the ears. Shadows in the ears. A little more shadows back here. Let's do that. And now, now that we put the shadows on the skin layer, what I do is I create me another layer and I put it right underneath the top line work. So I can add the shadows on that, on the mouth and the, and the eyes now. Let's go ahead and create a shadow for this. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? My shadows in this mouth. Facing out where I want my shadows to be. Okay, cool. Cool is good. Facing out my shadows. All right. Got them in the mouth. I want to put some shadows in this gun. Okay. I'm gonna just add a shadow on this dude. Let's do rag. Now, last but not least. I like to do the little glares in the eyes, so I create me a layer right above my line work at the very top. Let my color white. I just put me a little dot right here. Sometimes if I want it to really stand out, put me a little a bright spot right here. You feel me? And there you have it, man, how to draw. A little basic tutorial, man, how to work Adobe Illustrator. I'm finna show you how I always save my files as well. So, when you finish with your artwork and you wanna get ready to load that thing up on Instagram, what you would like to do, you would like to go to export, export as, save it as whatever you wanna call it. We're just gonna call it pop. Make sure this is use artboard you want to select that and what that is is telling your computer you only want to save what's inside your box what's inside this little white box you only want to save what's inside the white box if you don't click this it's going to save everything on the outside as well so we just want to save what's inside our border we made our 18 by 18 inches we're going to hit export and there you go it's going to be saved now, I save all my files as PNG. So saving them as PNG are going to make your background transparent unless you put your own background. You know what I'm saying? So that's one thing I forgot to do is put a background for it to sit on. So let's go to our rectangle tool. I selected the color. We're going to put a background right behind them. Boom. 
And now, let me go back, export, export as a PNG, I'm gonna call it pop two. So now we got one copy that's transparent and we got one copy with the color background. You wanna put your quality of your resolution on 300. Hit okay. And now, this how that thing looks saved. Let me go to my desktop. Pull it up. And this how your finished copy will look. After you save it to your computer, you finish drawing a picture and you want to get it to Instagram. What I do, I open up Facebook on my computer and I, I send it to myself as a message on Facebook. Then I save that picture to my phone. Then I load it up on Instagram. You feel me? Well, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure you stay tuned. More heat coming soon. And I'm out here.